Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of John 14, 21, and will manifest myself to him. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Let's go up here. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. Now, John, in 1 John, reiterates verse 15 again, and then in the following verses tells you what that is, what those commandments are. It was a very interesting study to dig into that because Jesus, Jesus himself, and I've done videos on this, Jesus himself talks about the Father's commandments, and then he talks about his own commandments, like they're two different things. But when you look at them, you find out that keeping Jesus' commandments actually, by default, makes you keep the ten. But they're much broader in their scope because they refer to everything instead of just specific things. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father that he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live, you will live also. At that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Interesting clue there, because he won't manifest himself to the whole world, but just to us. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the world which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, so this is how he's going to manifest himself to us. Whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Remember what I told you when you're familiar with the word? So you have to actually have to have read the Bible first. When you're familiar with the word, the Holy Spirit recalls it. He's bringing it to remembrance. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So there's no fear, there's no, you're not afraid of what's coming. There's peace. These are all ways Jesus is saying he's going to manifest himself to us. That's how, that's, this is how he's answering uh, Judas's question. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so do I. Arise, let us go from here. So in this part here, he actually was answering how he was going to reveal himself to us individually. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, recalling the Word, bringing it up to remembrance, teaching us all things, peace, um, not being troubled, not being fearful, not being scared. All different ways he's showing he's going to manifest himself to us. <coughs> the Lord Jesus gives special revelations of himself to his people. You know, another way is when you're reading the Bible and things start to make really, really interesting sense. Then when you listen to other people and they just recite the verse and have no clue what it's talking about. But when you read it, you're like, okay, well, this is saying something vastly different. And it's funny because, because they don't understand what that is. And instead of wanting to learn what it says and thinking that there may be somebody out there, the Lord has shared this with or opened their understanding to see it. They condemn you and say you're a false prophet. My answer instantly to them is, well, you have to be a prophet to be a false prophet, and I'm not a prophet and have never claimed to be one. 
So that uh, title you've given me is incorrect and incorrectly used. Further showing me, you don't understand what you're reading. So if you'd like me to help you understand, let's sit down and let's talk about it. Good luck, <laughs> because most people think they got it figured out and they do not. They have no clue. Well, this is I think this is part of the revealing of the Lord to us. These special revelations, and a lot of people are down on special revelations. Well, then how do you explain there are people out there who read the same verses we read and don't, don't see anything? And we read them and we're like, wait a minute, but look at this. And look at where it connects to this verse here and this verse there. The more we grow in our sanctification, the more he reveals to us. Not everybody's in the same place. Not everybody's in the same level of development. Even if scripture did not declare this, there are many of the children of God who could testify the truth of it from their own experience. They have had manifestations of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a peculiar manner, such as no mere reading or hearing could afford. In the biographies of eminent saints, you will find many instances recorded in which Jesus has been pleased in a very special manner to speak to their souls and to unfold the wonders of his person. That would be his characteristics. That would be his mannerisms. Remember when we talked about this. Yea, so have their souls been steeped in happiness that they have thought themselves to be in heaven, whereas they were not there, though they were well nigh on the threshold of it. For when Jesus manifests himself to his people, it is heaven on earth. It is paradise in embryo. It is bliss begun. As special manifestations of Christ exercise a holy influence on the believer's heart. One effect will be humility. So here's where he's getting into what I was telling you about the script and what the text was telling us. The way, some of the ways Jesus was showing how he was going to manifest himself to us and not the world. Because the world is only going to get a certain amount of, of, of view of this. We get much more because we're his. One effect will be humility. If a man says, I have had such and such spiritual communications, I am a great man. He has never had any communication with Jesus at all. For God hath respect unto the lonely, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Another thing is that if somebody says they have had that, they would be incredibly humbled by it. It would floor them because every single example in the Bible of anybody standing before any deity, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, under their, under their view, the weight pushes them to the ground. They come away with an incredibly different view of things because they have been in the presence of pure holiness. These people that talk about this, they, they've never seen them. They've never seen them. They're, they're liars and they're trying to get your money. He does not need to come near them to know them and will never give them any visits of love. Another effect will be happiness. For in God's presence, there are pleasures forevermore. Holiness will be sure to follow. A man who has no holiness has never had this manifestation. So he's not talking about a physical manifestation. He's talking about things that go along with being a true believer, a true convert, manifesting in our lives. He started with humility, um, happiness, holiness. Some men profess a great deal, but we must not believe anyone unless we see that his deeds answer to what he says. Now he's talking about evidence of conversion, evidence of the salvation within you. Unless we see that his deeds answer to what he says. If somebody says this, there must be evidence in, the, in that life that follow what they say has happened to them. And we can, should be able to view that. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. He will not bestow his favors upon the wicked. For while he will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he respect an evildoer. Thus, there will be three effects of nearness to Jesus. Humility, happiness, and holiness. May God give them to the Christian. So he proved the same point I told you before we even got into the devotion. What the script was telling us. The Lord told us, this is how I will reveal myself to you. These things will be present within you. If you are truly walking in faith, if you truly belong to me, if you are mine, if you are converted, 
the characteristics of Christ will manifest in the believer. And that will show in, in different aspects, in different ways, depending on the lifestyle and the personality of the person, but they'll be present. Because the closer we are with him, the more we become like him. The more we grow in sanctification, the more we become like him. And that's the whole, that's the whole core of it. A believer becomes more like Christ the more they learn from him and the more they grow in that grace. That's the evidence. You will have a lifestyle in one way or another or in several ways in, 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 compared to other people that it will be, it will manifest. It will be evident to anyone who has any understanding at all that there's something different about you, that you're different than everyone else, that you are walking a different path. Evidence of salvation. There must be evidence. I was just listening to Paul Washer this morning, one of his older sermons. He was talking about the exact same thing. Paul Washer is a Calvinist. But what he says is true. We can go to the scripture and prove it. Jesus did it. Jesus did it to the rich young ruler. But well, Lord, I did all these things. Really? Yep, from birth. What about this? All of it. Now, the, the Lord was, was testing him because he was trying to show him his, his hypocrisy. Oh, you did all those things according to the law, perfect from birth, circumcised on the 10th day, all this stuff. Okay. Sell all you have and give it to the poor. Show that you really believe what you say. Show evidence that something is different in you. Because when you, if you do that, everybody around you will see that there's something different with you. Now, Jesus didn't mean for him to just go ahead and go sell everything. But he was trying to make a point with the guy. You say that you're perfect, show it. Reveal it. Don't show it with these fake actions because I want to see what's in your heart. Your your physical actions are one thing. Your, your driving force in your heart is a whole other story. And he told him to do that because then that would show what the driving force in his heart was. If he truly loved the Lord and loved the people around him, that would be a great way to start showing it. That would be great action. You're perfect in all these things? Cool. These are all superficial things. Show something real. Now, that doesn't mean we all got to go sell everything we have and give it away. But we should at least be willing to give, willing to give of ourselves, willing to help others, willing to do what we can, when we can, if we can. And, and we even found verses in the Bible that talk about the Lord looks at the intents of the heart. We may not be able to do any of those things, but the intentions of our heart concerning that thing, the Lord pays attention to. I may desire to do something and just don't have the ability or the opportunity. The Lord takes that into consideration too. These are all evidences of salvation. And the life we live after conversion, it won't be perfect at all by any means. But our desire will be different. The New Testament records Rahab. The, the Old Testament records what happened with Rahab the harlot. The New Testament talks about that. She was righteous. Her intentions were true. She was still a harlot, unfortunately. But that changed. I'm sure that changed later. Lot was considered righteous. Look what happened to him. Look at the things he did. And yet, the intentions of his heart were being considered. And I'm sure later, if the story was continued, he, he everything changed. We, we can really become shocked at ourselves if we were to examine our lifestyles and see if there was anything that stood out that matched anything in the Bible. And, and this comes from a place of humility because you have to be very honest with yourself. I think we would tend to be shocked at how much we don't align with the Lord and how much we do. But you know what? Knowing that we are not going to be perfect, we can take that to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to, I want to show more that I'm with you than with the world. What can I change? And if I can't change it, Lord, I want you to change it. And he will change those things. But the fact that, the fact is we have to have a desire to do it. A desire to be different, a desire to be cha to be changed, a desire to change 
is another manifestation of the Lord within us because people in the world don't, they don't want to change. They enjoy their life. There's no desire to change. They don't want to be different. They don't want to be better. They don't want to get away from those things and lean into those things. Get away from the things of the world, lean into the things of the Lord. There's no desire to do it. To me, that's a great marker of whether the Lord has manifested himself to that person or not. Because if you are man, you see the Lord, if you witness him, your spirit sees him full on, you become engaged, you have interactions in some way, your desires will change. Concerning yourself, concerning the world, concerning others, your desires will change. Your desires for holiness and for righteousness will change. <laughs> A lot of people don't like when somebody talks about evidence of salvation. Where's the evidence that you're converted? Where's the evidence showing in your life that you're different? Because there should be something. And for most people, there's nothing. And they get mad. Well, it's okay to get mad. But at the very least, we should go look into it. Because I look at my life and I see that things are different. I pay attention to what I say and how I talk and how I interact. And I see things differently, and, and every day I see more and more things changing. My natural desires changing. And that's just what I view in myself. Examine yourself. Uh, and I'm not perfect at all, and I never will be until the Lord finishes the work he started in me. But there should be something. We should see something. And these are just some of the ways he will manifest himself to us. And each one of us has an individual testimony concerning that, how the Lord has manifested himself to us. He, and people take that verse out of context, not realizing what Jesus was saying. Because when he answered that question in those following verses, after Judas asked the question, how will you manifest yourself to us? He told him how in those verses. We see in this devotion, same same scenario. This is how he's, it's going to happen. We will take on his characteristics. <laughs> You will see aspects of Christ himself in your life manifested. It's not a, it's not he's going to appear as an apparition. It's not talking about a dream or a vision. It's talking about real change within you and me as believers. So that our profession isn't manifested by our, a saying we have a profession. Our profession is manifested by our actions. That's what James 2 was talking about. The, the profession of faith is manifested in action. I can tell you I'm a believer, and I can show you I'm a believer. And that's what it's how it's always been. That's what it's always been. And so we can look at ourselves, and we can check ourselves and see where do we stand. For so long, so many people have misunderstood how, how would Jesus manifest himself to me? And they start inventing stuff and, and making stuff up. Not realizing that the Bible specifically tells them, but see, they don't keep reading. And once they get that physical manifestation of a dream or vision or, or some, some other strange thing that they you see, like, Jesse you plan this is real bad about that. A couple of these other guys are real bad about that. And you start to see all that stuff and what they talk about. They, they give up reading the birth of the word. They give up on the Bible and they start leaning into those things. That's Satan. He appears as a being of light. And his ministers or his, his followers show up as ministers of light too. So these visions they're having of these beings in light are not Lord. Satan and his followers. The Bible told us it would happen. Because they've given up reading the word. If they would continue to read the word, they would realize, wait a minute, that's not right. And they would know that the next time they have that dream or vision, if they're actually having them, they would ask the entity they're standing before, did Jesus Christ send you? Let's see what happens. I promise you that the entity will disappear and the dream or vision will be over instantly if they are indeed standing before demons. The Lord manifests himself in such specific, unique ways that they cannot be copied by evil. Evil cannot copy humility. Evil cannot copy these things mentioned here. What do you talk about down here? Humility, happiness, and holiness. 
evil can put up a facade of those things, but he can't copy it. So we go to the Bible and we find the ways Jesus said he will manifest himself to us. And then we look at ourselves and see, is that happening? Am I exhibiting these characteristics, these mannerisms? If I am, Christ has manifested himself to me. If I don't, here's a great opportunity for repentance and change. Here's a great opportunity to ask for that. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this holy word, and thank you for this devotion. <coughs> I love and I'm thankful to you that we have manifestations of our Lord within us and in our daily mannerisms and daily lives. That his qualities and characteristics show that we belong to him because we are taking those things on as we are being changed through sanctification. That we are becoming more like him in this earth. And to a greater or lesser degree, it happens to all who believe. Lord, I pray for all the brethren around the world all those who are being changed, that more of your qualities manifest within us. And people can see that, that it is expressed externally in the lifestyle that we live on this earth, that we are salt and light. We show forth those qualities and properties of you, Lord, so that people will know I'm standing near a Christian, that the qualities of the Lord exist in this one. I'm standing near one of his. They will realize, you know, in the Old Testament, under the law, it was a, an external expression. We are to have an internal expression because under the law, it was fully external, not internal. The law didn't govern what the heart, the heart was. You govern the heart. You look at the heart. And so now we have this expression coming from inside, not just wearing it on the outside. I mean, anybody can keep the law. It's a phys just physical actions. It was a placeholder. It's the internal that makes the difference. Who am I really on the inside? That is what makes the difference. And that should be expressed externally. Showing who we really are. Showing who we really follow. Showing who you really are through us. You manifest the, th the fruit through us. Lord, I pray that this starts to come around for all of us and we start to realize, you know, if I want to see who I really am, I just look for the evidence of you existing within me, Lord. And I pray more and more we see more and more of these manifestations of your qualities in us. We're becoming like you. We're supposed to become more like you. This process of sanctification is changing us to be more like you. So, Lord, may we show these qualities listed here, listed in the text, and everywhere else we see it that we may be those people you are making us to be, that we may be more like you because you are perfect and we are to be perfect like the Father is perfect. And so we should be more like you. It's very simple. It's so, so shockingly simple. But Lord, wherever we make changes, I want it to be real, real changes, so that we really do emulate you, honor you and glorify you in this life by being more like you and applying that to everything that we do. We love you, Lord, and we thank you so much that you are revealing these things to us, that you are changing us, that you're manifesting the true evidence of a truly converted person and that others can see it. Because when they realize that they are, they, they are standing in the presence of one of your anointed, that could be an do open door for change. Who knows? But while we're still here, Lord, may we have the greatest impact possible in your name and for your glory. And may we become more like you every day because you are worthy of all of our love and all of our, of all of our obedience to your word. May we do your word, perform your word in any way that we it is feasible for us to do so according to your will. And according to your foreknowledge of all of us and where we're going. 
Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. Evidence of salvation. It's a real thing. It's, it's a reality. The Bible talks about it over and over again. The Lord says, this should be manifested in you, which relates to your lifestyle. It's something that will be expressed externally because of who you really are inside. Who a person really is inside will manifest outside. That applies to anybody and everybody on the earth. So if I'm turning into a Christian, if I'm being born again, if I'm being made to be more like Christ inside, it will show itself outside. If I'm evil and dark and hateful and selfish inside, that will manifest outside. Who we really are is going to show in our life because if we're for the Lord, it will we'll have evidence of it. If we're against the Lord, we'll have evidence of it. It's so shockingly simple. And so if we need to examine ourselves, we do it. I think we might be surprised just how much we're following the Lord and don't realize it. And if we find that we're not, what a great opportunity to make changes. Take it to the Lord and ask him, Lord, show me what to do. Show me what to do and I'll do it. And then make sure you're reading the Bible as much as you can, learning and studying from the word as much as you can. And one day, all of a sudden, you'll realize, whoa. Because you'll start to notice people will start to look at you different. People will start to address you differently. People will have a much greater level of respect for you by nature. Or they will have an unnatural hatred for you. That's the way of the world. But the evidence of who you are will show you through their actions who you are. Look at how people are out in the world and how they approach you and address you, and that will tell you something about you. How do people respond to you? Big indicator as to who we really are. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.